Hi, I'm Kate Hayes. I lead advocacy communications at Bear, and with me is my young coworker, my son Kellen, who's been helping me with our Science at Home series while we're all working from home. And this week, we're learning about science in the air, and also about how changes in the air lead to different weather conditions. And so we thought, who better to talk to about weather than a meteorologist? And so today we're going to be talking to a really cool meteorologist. Some know him as Mr. Science. His name is Jason Lindsay, and he runs a cool program called Hooked on Science with all kinds of fun resources for kids. So, Jason, we're excited that we can talk to you about weather today. Glad to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, right now I'm standing in front of something called the Green Wall. Do you all know what that means? Yes, we do. What is it? What, what, what appears behind me on television? The weather graphics? You're exactly right. Smart kid you have there, Kate. Uh, yeah, behind us, wherever you see green, the computer likes to superimpose or place those graphics in the green, which means I could never wear green or I would become invisible. Pretty cool, right? That's really cool. So what is a meteorologist? So a meteorologist is a scientist who attempts to predict the weather. We have a bunch of forecasting models that we look at. And basically a forecasting model is an example of what's supposed to happen in a specific area, a specific place. So we use tools, uh, different kinds of science when it comes to forecasting models and looking at Doppler radar and satellite images from outer space to predict the weather, to track storms, to keep you and your family safe. How far can you predict the weather in advance? You know, our seven-day forecast is what you see on TV. So we attempt to do it up to seven days. But to get an accurate forecast, it doesn't matter how many degrees you have in meteorology or how much knowledge you have. The equipment that we have, I would say anywhere between 24 to 36 hours is going to be more accurate than that seven-day forecast. Uh, you know, sometimes I can hit the nail on the head and get it right in seven days. But there's sometimes the mother nature likes to say, hey, meteorologist, you don't know it all. You're wrong. And I get it wrong. <laughs> What's the hardest part about being a meteorologist? You know, the hardest part about being a meteorologist, I think, is making sure we provide the most accurate forecast with the information that we have to keep the viewer safe. Like I said, you know, Many years ago, it was a little different when forecasting weather than it is now. We have more tools, but even with the tools that we have today and the science that has advanced the way it has, we still can sometimes get it wrong. Because at the end of the day, our ultimate goal is to make sure you're prepared, whether you're going outside to play in the park, or maybe you're going to have an outdoor wedding or whatever it is, or just bottom line, keeping you safe from the storm. Our ultimate goal is to make sure you're aware. And sometimes that can be difficult um, when Mother Nature doesn't want to cooperate or when the forecasting models are completely wrong and we're using our gut, if you will, uh, and what we know about weather in a specific area to predict the weather. Yeah, it's a tough job and we really appreciate everything you do to try to keep us safe. Can you show us a cool experiment on weather? Of course, uh, lots of clouds where you're at today. You know, you know all about clouds, you see them in the sky. Yeah? yeah, we're going to create one right here where I'm at. So on the table, I have two important ingredients. I have some super hot water over here. And then right here, I have something called dry ice. It's frozen carbon dioxide gas. So basically, breathe out carbon dioxide gas frozen in a science lab. Super cold, like 110 degrees below zero. Okay, uh, I'm going to take this and dump it in here. And it's gonna go from a solid to a gas. We call that sublimation. It's gonna sublimate. The hot water will speed up that process. It'll act as what we call a catalyst. So what do you think is gonna happen when I dump that in there? I believe the dry ice will sublimate and create a miniature cloud above the pot. That's pretty cool. Let me hear you say, go science. Go science. Here we go, are you ready? Three, two, one. There's our cloud. Whoa. I promise I didn't disappear. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? That now is it's really thinking. cool. It's going straight down. The reason for that is because carbon dioxide gas is heavier than the air around us, and it's sinking down. Yeah, that's really cool. Awesome. You can create one there at your house. Just do it in the living room. Okay, obviously not. 
<laughs> just make sure mom and dad are around before you do any science experiments. And if you want to be a meteorologist when you grow up, it's important that you take lots of science and math classes. Lots and lots and lots, like many years of calculus. Um, well, thanks again, Jason. You want to tell everyone where we can find some Hooked on Science resources? Sure, you can check it out. It's all free at hookedonscience.org or feel free to follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Just look for Hooked on Science. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us. Thank you to everyone who keeps tuning in. Remember, you can also find more science at home resources and other scientists' interviews on bear.com. And we'll see you next time. Stay safe.